This is the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter, 2021. Lesson 10 for May 29 to June 4, The New Covenant. Read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, May 30. Behold, the days are coming. Read Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, and answer the following questions. 1. Who instigates the covenant? 2. Whose law is being talked about here? What law is this? 3. Which verses stress the relational aspect that God wants with his people? And 4. What act of God, in behalf of his people, forms the basis of that covenant relationship? Jeremiah 31, beginning at verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds, and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbour, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. It is clear the New Covenant is not so different from the Old Covenant made with Israel on Mount Sinai. In fact, the problem with the Sinai Covenant was not that it was old or outmoded. The problem instead was that it was broken, as we read in verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. The answers to the above questions, all found in these four verses, prove that many facets of the old covenant remain in the new one. The new covenant is, in a sense, a renewed covenant. It is the completion or the fulfilment of the first one. Focus on the last part of Jeremiah 31, verse 34, in which the Lord says that he will forgive their iniquity and the sin of his people. Let's just read that. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Even though the Lord says that he will write the law on our hearts and place it within us, he still stresses that he will forgive our sin and iniquity which violates the law written in our hearts. Do you see any contradiction or tension between these ideas? If not, why not? What does it mean, as Romans 2.15 puts it, to have the law written within our hearts? And we... We'll just read that. Who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. And then we also look at Matthew 5, verses 17 to 28. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfil. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that... Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But... Whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, 
Leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly, while you're on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Looking at the verses for today, how could you use them to answer the argument that somehow the Ten Commandments, or specifically the Sabbath, are now made void under the New Covenant? Is there anything at all in those texts that makes that point? On the contrary, how could one use those texts to prove the perpetuity of the law? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.